This video will explain the management of levels within Pro Tools. It's important to understand the different metering conditions in Pro Tools in order to set and control levels properly. First we'll look at metering types. If we right click on a Pro Tools channel meter, we see a wide range of metering options. These options represent different ways of seeing and metering signal levels. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll set the channel meters to sample peak. Looking at the numbers at the bottom of the fader, the left number represents the fader position on the left hand fader scale, and the right hand number represents the highest peak signal level against the signal level meter on the right hand side. When set to sample peak, meter level is represented as the number of decibels before full scale or clipping occurs. At this point, no further quantization levels are available to record the signal and clipping or distortion occurs. Peak signal level is therefore expressed as decibels full scale, or dBFS for short. It's represented as a minus sign and a number. This represents the amount of level in decibels underneath the point where full scale clipping or distortion occurs. Let's look at meter behavior when recording. When looking at the meter levels on a record enabled or input monitored track, we're seeing the signal level arriving at the inputs of the analog to digital converters. When recording, we're aiming to get our levels up above about minus 14 dBFS or so without hitting zero dBFS. This requires some careful observation while setting levels. We must not clip the converters at this stage by hitting zero, otherwise we'll get distortion. At the same time, we want to record with enough signal level to take advantage of the full dynamic range and resolution of our digital audio workstation. Recording with levels too low can be equally as problematic as clipping from converter overload. It's important to understand that when recording, the channel fader does not control or affect level. This is often misunderstood. When recording, the input level can only be controlled from an external source such as a microphone preamp on an attached audio interface or other external hardware like a mixing desk. For this reason, when recording, we need to set our recording levels from this external device and we can't do it within Pro Tools. Before we play back audio, we can set Pro Tools channel meters to two different conditions. This is set in the Options menu. The first condition is pre-fader metering. With this option checked, Pro Tools channel meters will reflect the recording levels contained in the file or clip which is playing back on that track. Moving the fader to add or subtract gain will not affect the levels on the meter. If we uncheck this option, we'll be seeing the level leaving the channel following the fader, so the meter will be showing post-fader levels. In this condition, moving the fader will show the resulting change to level on the channel meter. Pro Tools has a very high resolution 64-bit internal mixer, which has a far greater dynamic range than 24-bit digital audio converter systems. This means that following recording, clipping is rarely an issue within the Pro Tools mixer itself until we arrive at the master fader. Having said that, it's good practice not to clip your channels when playing back as certain plug-in processes can introduce distortion when presented with too much level. So it's best to control your channel levels on playback so that they don't register amber clip lights. You'll also notice that plug-in processes have input and output meters. Whilst a 64-bit environment is very forgiving of high signal levels, it's likewise good practice to avoid clipping the input and output of your plug-in processes. Plugins on Pro Tools channels are pre-fader, which means that the signal level going into the plugin is not affected by the channel fader. For this reason, if you see clipping at the input of a plugin processor, you either need to reduce clip gain on your audio clips on the track, or pull back the input level control on the plugin processor if there is one. When we play back tracks in the Pro Tools mixer, the track outputs will sum to whatever output they are being sent to. Summing is the mixing together of multiple channel signals to a set of outputs. For stereo mixing, 
we sum or combine all our mixer channels to a pair of outputs, which is typically outputs 1 and 2 on our audio interface. Most people label these. In our studios, we have labelled outputs 1 and 2 as the main outputs in the I.O. setup window. By default, when we create tracks in Pro Tools and play them back, we don't see the aggregate level from the summing at the main outputs. This means we don't know how much level we are generating from the sum of our channels in the Pro Tools mixer. Not knowing this is a problem, as we need to ensure that we do not clip this pair of outputs or distortion will occur in our mix file when we are mixing our track down. To address this issue, we must create a master fader for our session, which is set to the main outputs, or outputs 1 and 2, whatever they are labelled. We do this from the track menu where we go Track, New, and then go One Stereo Master Fader, and then click Create. This will create a master fader. This fader can then be used to see the aggregate level for whatever set of outputs we set it to. If we look above the auto label, we can see a pop-down menu. This menu allows us to specify which set of outputs this master fader will control and meter. Once we have set this correctly, we will now see on these master fader meters the signal level from the entire Pro Tools mixer. This is the signal level that will be present in any mix down or file bounce that we do when creating a mix. For this reason, it's extremely important that we do not clip this output and that the levels leaving the mixer are correct. Any clipping at the master fader will result in distortion in any mix file that we create. When you're learning mixing, it's best to shoot for your highest peaks to be within the top 5 dB of the meter range on the master fader and avoid any clipping. A mix file which is bounced from within Pro Tools will contain the same signal peak level as is registered on the master fader meters. Later on we'll look at the topic of mastering, controlling overall apparent mix loudness and level standards for delivery to different platforms.